Sorry about that. I've been for the past ten days or so I've been insanely busy. Absolutely every night has been a five AM or or at least four AM. You ever get to that point where you're so exhausted that you get like cold chills? You just get so run down. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly how I've been. Um, some of these are actually a viewer request uh, answers on best books. And as I've said many countless times, I could always tell what somebody knows by the stuff that they recommend that you read. It's extremely telling. Um, one of them, you know, outside of wasting 15 years of your life learning an ancient dead language like Pali, of learning about uh, original uh, Buddhism, since I've been asked so many time, times, um, there really are no sources except for an extremely few. Um, I'll uh, make available to in the very near, near future, um, there are four books by uh, C.A.F. Rees Davids. She was an ancient Pali a translator and also to uh, founding a member of the Pali Text Society, which I am also a member thereof. And uh, she wrote uh, books on original Buddhism and they're extremely pithy and very good. She died many, many, many decades ago, but they're excellent, but unfortunately those books are, they're not rare, they are insanely rare. But thanks to me, I've digitized those books, and I will make them available for download. They are out of copyright. Uh, they are also online, if you can find them. Um, but I'll make a video about that and uh, give you links to download them. But one book that you are able to find, because it has been reprinted many times, I think recently it's been, uh, meaning in the past decade plus, been reprinted because of my um, extensive exposure on this book and uh, how important it is to have it. Is by George Grimm, and it's called Doctrine of the Buddha. And you can also find copies of this online, thanks to me, by the way, also once again. If you really want to know about original Buddhism, not the sectarian stuff, um, those yellow-robed guys running around uh, Southeast Asia, Laos, Burma, Thailand, uh, Ceylon, that's not original Buddhism, that's Theravada. Um, it's extremely very far removed from actual Buddhism, completely removed. Um, but this is an incredible book with enormous amount of uh, citations, and it is easy to read. It's not like a mind-bending book, because I know I uh, make recommendations on those. But anyway, it's by George Grimm, and it's George, of course, and then G-R-I-M-M, -M, Doctrine of the Buddha. This is... Uh, there are a lot of uh, copies out there for uh, download of this book, thanks to me. And you should be able to easily find them. I cannot put those links below. But if you look in the comments section, people always leave comments to where you can find uh, those books. So people will ask me, it's like, where is a book about a real Buddhism? And as someone who is an expert on original pre-sectarian Buddhism, or also too called Nikkeian Buddhism, um, this is, other than C.F. Rees Davids, this is it. And that is absolutely unbelievable that uh, a metaphysics, and I don't say religion, a metaphysics that large only really has two sources as to the original. Like if, if you were to look about uh, books about what original, other than the Bible of course, right, about original Christianity, I mean there's a, you know, I'm going to make a generalization, about 95% of the stuff out there is obviously trash. But I mean, 5% is um, written by true scholars that actually know what the original was and give you a lot of very helpful information. And as that means hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of authors. When it comes to this, I only know, well, there's really three. But there's really, and trust me, I've had my hands on more books on Buddhism than anybody you will ever meet. That's not my opinion, that's a fact. There's only two sources. And that's one of them. That's a book you should download. Let me get on to the next one here. And uh, this is uh, by, this guy used to be president of India also. This is a translation of uh, the principle of Upanishads, Brihadranika Upanishad, Katha Upanishad. Give you a transliteration uh, from the Sanskrit and also the, to the translation in English. So you can actually read in transliteration from the Sanskrit um, 
what uh, the English is making reference to, which is really good. And uh, anyway, this is the uh, Principal Upanishads, edited with introduction, text, translation, and notes by S. Radhakrishnan. This is also, too, a downloadable uh, book. This is really a valuable one to have. I've got like five or six copies of this book I've given away. Easily five or six copies to other people who never returned them. I didn't say they had to return them, but uh, this is uh, this is a great one. I can't say this is the best translation, but very pithy uh, with transliteration, like I said, of the Sanskrit and then the English translation. Very, very, very good translation, too, by the way. So highly recommend this book. It's great reading material. Really, really great reading material. Now, I know this guy actually had some radical personal beliefs, um, and uh, political leanings, and I'm not into politics, but this is Julius Evola. I am 99.9% .9 opposed to Western existentialists, especially those that are called philosophers. They're not philosophers. They're navel-gazing, navel-gazing, yeah, look in your belly button fuzz, navel-gazing Western existentialists. I don't read that. Life is too short to read that garbage. I don't recommend it. I don't recommend Kant, Hume, uh, Schopenhauer, uh, Hegel, um, Carl Jung. I don't recommend any of those guys. So they're pretty worthless. Life is just really too short to read garbage like that. But here's a Westerner, and uh, he wrote many books. Ride the Tiger is another one. That's, it's Ride the Tiger. Anyway, and this one's a very appropriate title. It's called Revolt Against the Modern World. This is a phenomenal masterpiece. Everybody really should be forced um, to read this. Um, it's not a lot of hardcore metaphysics in it. Um, there is a substantial amount, but this is a really great read, and it will make you think a lot. Julius Evola, whatever you think of him, monocle guy. Okay? When was the last time you saw someone with a monocle? Very, very, very intelligent uh, person. I'm not interested in his politics or his personal views on certain things in the world, which I won't comment on that he wrote about here and there, but... He is a genius on metaphysics, and uh, it's uh, brilliant to read. I recommend, it's called The Metaphysics of War. There's one great book. The other one is called Ride the Tiger, and uh, this one, uh, Revolt Against the Modern World, this is available for download, like, basically everywhere. Thanks to me and thanks to other people. Now, now this is some really good, like, oh my God, you're whipping out five books that are basically a collection. <laughs> it's like, that's a lot of reading. This, this is the jackpot. Um, I've already got like about nine videos on top recommended books. And even though I have, my house is a library and I've had my hands through more books than anybody else on the topic of metaphysics. I'm sure there might be a couple, few people out there in the world that have had their hands on more, but not really, more than a few. I'm running actually out of books of giving highest recommendation to, but this definitely fits in with that uh, category. Oh my God, and there's a Sankara on the Soul, Sankara on Enlightenment, Tattvam Asi, or That Thou Art, the Thousand uh, Upadis Sahasri of Vivechudamuni, translation of uh, one of his two primary works of Sri Sankaracharya. Upadis Sahasri and the Vivechudamuni are the two primary works of Sankara. Sankara on the Absolute, oh my God, I got three copies of this book. I keep lending it out to people. Sankara on Rival Views. These are masterpieces. These uh, all are by uh, A.J. Alston. A.J. A-L-S-T-O-N. Okay. And uh, I forget, uh, oh yeah, it's uh, by Shanti Sadan, Publishers of London. Uh, these are very cheaply printed books, so they're not going to cost you a ton to find copies thereof. Um, there are digital copies out there of these. I can't remember the last time I saw them. It was like over a decade ago. Refutation of non-Vedic worldviews, a refutation of inadequate Brahmanical doctrines. Uh, this is a treasure trove of sharpening the steel of your mind. Um, these books are masterpieces. I, I, oh my gosh, these are, these really are must have. Like if you're gonna wall yourself in a, in a, in a, in a bunker or something with like a, an array of like about a hundred books or so, this is definitely, definitely, definitely should have it. Sankara on the Absolute is an absolute masterpiece. Sources on Sankara's doctrine, his life and works, which is not all that uh, super important, but it is incredible. Uh, Sankara, Nature of the Results of Nyesience, Nyesience, uh, uh, Avidya, or uh, Avidya in, in Sanskrit, 
what they call nescience. Nescience is non-comprehension and false comprehension, self and not self, atman and anatman, non-discrimination, mutual superimposition. This really is a sharpening stone for sharpening your mind. I mean, you will make your mind like a powerful laser if you could slowly read this and contemplate it while reading. Oh, my God, these books really are... I just, uh, I am intellectually drooling at the thought of reading these uh, once again. This is my second uh, copy of these. I think I got three copies of this collection. Um, I think there's six books in total. There's an, another smaller book that I didn't bring out of uh, much lesser importance, but I think there's six books in total. Once again, they're all by uh, A.J. Alston. Masterpiece, Soul and Its Origins and Bodies. Um, oh, The States of the Soul. The soul yeah. Mm. What a masterpiece. What an absolute masterpiece. Yeah, this is uh, from the Thousand Teachings of Upadisa Zahasri. Uh, all the slokas thereof, i.e. the passages. Mm, my God. I said intellectually salivating at these books. I'd like to read you like a citation or or two from each one, but, uh, you know, we're talking about uh, five books here. Uh, yeah, Direct Path, um, Indirect Path, um, oh, The Enlightened Man, the huge section on The Enlightened Man, the notes thereof. The notes are, are masterpieces alone. Um, also, too, uh, Romanized Sanskrit, for those of you who can't read Devanagri, there's a uh, transliteration or Romanization of uh, the Sanskrit. Oh, my God, these are... <sighs> Someone to say the witness affirms self-existence because the conscious immediate self-evident, aprakosa, the red of the appeals immediate consciousness, the case is different from one who denies the self, parentheses, the Buddhist nihilist. <laughs> Back in the day of the Sankara, uh, Buddhists had already become completely schismatic and nihilistic, and this is a reference to the Sarwasti Wadins, which today we call the Terawadins. Those are those yellow-robed guys running around Southeast Asia. Completely nihilistic, uh, soul-denying nihilists, which of course is completely contrary to original Buddhist doctrine. Um, man, these, these books are masterpieces. I can't recommend them high enough. Highly enough. Excuse me. Anyway, thank you for watching. And... Um, and by the way, read the comments. So people will post uh, info on where to find uh, these books. And I will bring to you uh, the works, because I already have them digitized, of course. You're welcome. Uh, of C.A.F. Rees Davids, Caroline Augustus Foley Rees Davids. Um, she's the most prolific poly translator to ever live. And she completely rejected, based upon doctrine itself, um, all of what is today called Buddhism, which is not Buddhism at all. It is uh, completely uh, opposite of that. Um, or as Dr. Ananda Ke uh, Kitish Kumaraswamy famously said, Buddhism today is most famous for everything it originally never taught. Very succinct and pithy. An ingenious man. I was friends with his son. He gave me rights to all of his father's works. Dr. A.K. Kumaraswamy, whose books you should read, all of his books, he knew 27 different languages. He wrote dozens and dozens of books, thousands of articles. He wrote so many books and articles that long after his death, long, long after his death, they had to make a freaking book just containing a list of all the books and articles that he wrote. He was that prolific an author. And his son said he typed like this. Not like, you know, on the typewriter, but... Unbelievable, mind-blowing, that someone could write that many books and articles doing that number on the typewriter. <laughs> anyway, thanks so much for watching, and uh, have a good one. Bye.